Steve in Burlington, North Carolina writes to me, I've encountered references to impedances of preamps, amplifiers, and speakers, and as best I can tell, they're supposed to match each other. I thought as long as the output voltage of a device is powerful enough, then the impedance downstream isn't important. But now I suspect there's more to the story. How does one know if the components are a good match? And do two buffers help? Thanks for being informative. Well, okay. So technically, yes, impedance matching is important. But practically speaking, it's not important. And here's why. The vast majority of separates that you're going to buy from our company, from any of our fellow manufacturers in the field are going to be just fine. Here, here's the basic rules that we want to pay attention to. For impedances, we want low output impedance and high input impedance. And as long as there's a factor of about 10 or 100, anything greater than 10 between the two, you're going to be in fine shape. For example, Let's say that you have a preamplifier and it has an output impedance of 100 ohms. Well, as long as you have a minimum of 1,000 ohms and better 10,000 or even 100,000 ohms on the other side, you're going to be fine because you'll be able to drive that at the voltage level that we're talking about without any kind of problems. Now. Even high output impedance devices like vacuum tube preamplifiers, for example. Let's say that has an output impedance of a few hundred ohms or a thousand ohms. As long as you're putting that into, oh, the average impedance on an input of an amplifier of 30K, 20K, 100K, 50K, you're going to be just fine. So I don't know of any amplifiers today that have anything less than 10,000 ohms input impedance, and most of them are around 20,000 ohms, which will always match up with the lower impedance of the source or a preamplifier. So in a practical sense, don't worry about it. I think you are going to be fine. Okay? I hope that helps explain. All right. Thanks. Thank you.